wire, multiple layers of chicken wire over top of the mixer that we shovel it through. A little more work, but you want a finer mix for the mortar. So we'll clean that off a little bit. You can see this one's already been, been pretty cleaned off. Um, and then we'll blow it off with the blower. And, uh, and we'll, we're going to moisten the top down a little bit. And then we'll throw down the next course. So we're moistening down the top of the course so that when you throw the mud on top the dry bricks don't suck the moisture out of the mortar too quick and uh, give you less cracking in the mortar. And one of the really cool things about working with adobe is how forgiving it is. You can We mixed up four wheelbarrows worth of mud in that one mixer and we won't be able to get to it right away. So unlike concrete that just goes off when it does, the mud covered with plastic, tuck the plastic in, and we just tuck the plastic down around the edges. And that'll sit like that for a couple days. I mean, you could come back to it in three days and, and still use it. So we'll put it aside like that and then uncover them as we need them. One of the other nice things about working with Adobe is it doesn't dry your hands out like concrete does. So you can get your hands right in it. You can wear gloves if you want, but so you just scoop it up. Put a nice thick layer. You know, we're doing thick grout joints. So you want to throw, I don't know, maybe twice as much as your grout joint's going to be, maybe a little less than that. And then you'll smush it down and out when you put your your brick up. Yeah, you can do this with a shovel, obviously. The higher it gets, pretty soon we do start doing it all with a shovel. Nice 
big bed of, of uh, mortar down there. You can go as far as you want. You gotta be careful about going too far because if it sits here too long and it starts drying up, it gets harder to set your bricks down in. So you go a ways, uh, you'll learn how far you can kind of go before it gets away from you. But so I'm gonna stop right there for now and we'll lay it up. About it. So on the corners, you wanna, you wanna try to find some nice bricks for the corners uh, because you're you're seeing an edge of the brick that you don't normally see. Most of these you're just seeing the ends. So you want to pay a little bit closer attention to the bricks you set in the corner. Again, not a huge deal, but um, so we'll throw our first brick down. You want to start in your corners. You got to start in your corners and work out to the, the ends. If not, you'll you work from the end to the corner. You might get to the corner and have a funky little tiny brick that you got to cut. You want a good full brick in the corner and then you lay your bricks out to your windows or your doors. You see you got the string here. You line in this edge up, this corner up with the string. Then you push it down. If you smush any out, you just scoop it up and throw it back in the pile. So if you notice on here, when we made the bricks, the ground isn't even, so sometimes you get a little thicker brick than the form. So if you notice the string line, like I said earlier, it's more important that the string line gauges the brick this way, not as important as the up and down. Since this brick is a little thicker, it's going to stick up a little bit and then it'll be hidden in the grout joint. But you can play with it a little bit up and down, you want to keep it the best you can in and out following the string. So here in Utah, we have to have a post and beam structure. They won't allow us to use the adobe as structural, bear our trusses on the adobe like you can in New Mexico and some other places. So here, the whole structure is bared on these posts and beams. So what that causes us to do is we gotta notch our bricks around all these posts. So the way we do that is just with a, a saw. cutting that much out of these bricks they get real fragile in the, in the corner so make a few cuts to make relief cuts so that you can take that out and not break the brick you can you know you could cut a little piece of brick here and then wire tie it to the post um, like brick masons do it works but this if you can keep it attached like that it's a lot easier because when you have these pieces um, they like to slump out a little bit it's just a lot harder so if you can notch it, which you can see, he took over half the brick out there. So you can notch them pretty far if you make the right cuts and have a solid piece to put in there, which is a lot better than working with end cuts. So one of the easy ways to set this is you start back and then you, you, you set down in, and it, go ahead, Dean. See how it pushes the mud up in here, which, is something you gotta do. You gotta get mud in between them. So when you start back, you can push it down and you'll get to where you can push it down and it almost lines up right with the string. Then you scoop the mud off, throw the extra mud up in between, and uh, and you're, you're pretty close to being good to go. If you don't do that, or when you can't do that, you have these dry joints. So then you have to take some extra mud, throw them down in there, 
and then you just kind of push it down in there. You can hold your hand out here, and then when it's full, just wipe it off. And this will all get cleaned up at a later process when we strike the bricks. up you want to wait a little bit you can't strike too soon when the mud's really wet and you try to strike it just wants to fall out so you let the mud set up a little bit and then then you do the striking this is your opportunity to make it look as pretty as you want it to look Also go around if there's something that's not going to get got to for a little bit you can just pour a little water on it and that'll help keep it soft enough so that you can do what Brittany's doing there when you get to it so obviously you can go with however thick of mortar joint you want uh, maybe you want a tighter uh, joint in there. Um, we're going with it's measured at an inch. Um, they look more like inch and a half, sometimes two inches. One of the benefits to going with a tighter or a, a larger joint is your bricks don't have to be as perfect. If you were trying to get away with a half inch mortar joint, your bricks are going to have to be really, really good to be able to, to make that work. Um, Doing them on the ground out there, our bricks, some of them have close to three quarters of an inch, half an inch of difference in the thickness of them. So by doing a thicker mortar joint, we can still use those bricks and you can't tell. It's just hidden in the, in the joint. So something to think about when you're deciding how thick of a mortar joint you want to use. So something to keep in mind is you're going to have some bricks that one end doesn't look as nice as the other end for whatever reason. So here in our house from this wall all the way around this concrete vault um, you're not going to see the other side of the brick. There's going to be a framed wall right here in the closet and then obviously the concrete is right there. So. You can stack your your bricks that have a, you know, let's show you an example. So like, like this brick right here, that end's not very pretty, but the other side of it looks nice. So you can put that messed up side against the, the vault or against a, a wall that you're gonna have some framing on the other side. So something to just keep in mind. And the nice thing about Adobe is you can get the whole family involved. Bit of work and they learn to do a real good job. 